Well, hello everyone. I'm Suzanne McLean, and I know many of you know me. What well, we're going to do today, our first ever podcast. Thanks for joining us. Um, to get started, I would love to introduce all of my team members because um, I know everybody wants to know who they're talking to when you call in the office. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce Tisha first. So Tisha is one of our other advisors here. Um, so Tisha, if you don't mind, say hello. Hello, everyone. All right, and the next one would be Alice. And I know many of you have worked with Alice, so Alice, say hello. Hello, everyone. All right, and Ty. Um, I know when you guys call in a lot of times you get Ty, so Ty, say hello. Hello, everyone. Okay, and Brittany is our newest member, so let's say hello to Brittany. Hi, y'all. Okay, all right, and of course, um, last but not least, my better half, Joe McLean. So I'm going to turn it over to Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Hey, everybody. It's great to have everybody here with us today. So before we actually start the recording of the podcast, we just want to kind of do a quick hello and kind of like tell you what we're trying to do. So we're starting this monthly podcast. And what we see is it, it working like we want to make it so it's helpful, informational to you. Uh, our clients, but we also want it to be um, something that you can share with your friends uh, that are maybe retiring and like, hey, check out these people. They're great at helping people with Medicare. And uh, we also want like we have we work with a lot of financial advisors, so it's going to be great for sharing with our financial advisors um, that refer a lot of their clients to us to know like really more about us and who we are and that type of thing. So. Um, Suzanne, let's uh, let's get started as we're hitting the record button here on the podcast, and I'll start out with the intro, and then we'll let you take it away. Okay, go right ahead. So, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our first ever podcast, and today we're going to talk about the mission statement for NUMA, the why behind NUMA. Uh, about a year ago, I read a book, great book by Simon Sinek that talked about start with your why. So I thought what better to start with our very first podcast episode with the why of what we do here at NUMA. So I'm going to have uh, Suzanne, I'm jo by the way, I'm Joe McLean and we have Suzanne McLean here on uh, with us. She is the one of the co-founders of National United Medicare Advisors. We also have Tisha with us on our team, Brittany, Alice, Ty, and uh, we're all going to be working together and uh, we're all on mic. Uh, some of us are maybe stay a little bit silent than others here on the podcast, but we're going to try to work work us work the whole team in over time over the uh podcast so we're going to try to do these once a month well we're our goal is to do these once a month um and we may get to the place where we're doing more than one a month but for now we think that's a good um schedule so suzanne uh so the why here at numa is to help and protect others especially when life gets complicated and that's a pretty broad thing. So how I look at that is like, you know, it's perfect for helping people with Medicare, right? Because life's getting complicated. You're retiring, right? And you've probably, people, our clients have had the same insurance for quite possibly years, right? Maybe 20, 30 years or more. And now they're, now they're forced to go on this thing called Medicare and uh, they've, you know, they're, they're put into retirement all their life. They've done the same thing, possibly in the same career. And now things are changing with what they do every day. So life gets really complicated, really, when you think about retirement. A lot of people, their view of retirement is like, hey, it's party time, it's vacations, it's fun, right? But what we've found with working with uh, over 4,000 clients is that life gets really complicated when you retire. And that's what we're to help here to help you with that, um, and especially when it comes to your Medicare. And along with that help, it's also protect because there's lots of Medicare, there's lots of Medicare roles and people accidentally, and Susanna's going to talk about, tell a story about this, people can accidentally get penalized 
if they don't, if they're not sure about what exactly to do with their Medicare and choosing the right course of action for their self on Medicare. So that's where the protect comes in. So it's kind of a broad mission statement to help and protect others, especially when life gets complicated. But I think it also gives us the flexibility to say, hey, we're not just about Medicare. Like, yeah, we're really good at helping people with Medicare. But you know what we found is people ha can struggle with ident their identity when they retire. So that's another situation where life's getting complicated, right? And how can we help and protect you with in that area of your life when life, you know, when life gets complicated? And uh, you know, so there's other things that we want to help and protect our clients with. Just be, just not. It's not just about Medicare, although that is really what we're good at, um, at helping with Medicare at this time. So. Suzanne, I want you to jump into your story and uh, we'll let you take it from here. Okay. So like Joe said, um, a year or so ago, he was reading the book, you know, start with your why. And um, I guess normally over the last several years, I got into, you know, when I was talking with clients, it was like, I just would get right into, let's get your Medicare taken care of. And I had people tell me so often or ask me so often, they'd be like, well, how did you get involved in Medicare? I mean, why would you do this? So I started really soul searching, like what, what's my real reason for all of this? And really this is exactly what happened. So I'm gonna go back to my childhood. So going back to my childhood, I grew up one of five children. So now I was the oldest girl, I had an older brother and then I had younger siblings. Well, my mom and dad were, my dad was a minister. So my mom and dad was in the ministry. And growing up, I felt I always watched my mom and dad give to other people, always helping other people, serving. As many of you know, ministry, ministers, that's what they do is they serve and they help. And as my dad, you know, he was also in the business, we, uh, business field. As my dad could have continued to climb the corporate ladder, Oftentimes he would say, okay, kids, we're going to pack up and we're going to move over here and we're going to start this, you know, help this congregation start, get off the ground. And as a child, I really never understood that, but I watched it, it was right in front of me. And as I got into my early, like early twenties, I remember there was a minister and he and his family had, was having some struggles financially. And it kind of put me back to like when I was little growing up at home. And of course, this is before ring doorbell. And I remember a couple of me and a couple of my girlfriends got together and we're like, well, let's go to the grocery store and just buy some groceries. So we went to the grocery store in the family. We were getting some groceries for, they had some small kids. And I remember like going through like the little Debbie aisle and buying some Debbie cakes and being like, oh, those kids would love that. So I bought some little Debbie cakes and we bought some groceries. Like I said, this is back in my early 20s. So before ring doorbell and we went to the house, we put them on the porch, we rang the doorbell and we took off. And the feeling that come over me of, oh my goodness, I just helped somebody like made me realize that that was really what was inside of me as I wanted to help people. I had grown up watching it, having a great example of serving people and helping people. And you might say, well, how does that translate to Medicare? Well, here's how it did. So let's fast forward a few years down the road. And as I was going through my, you know, middle, mid twenties into my early thirties, like, well, late twenties, mid twenties, early, oh, I'm sorry, early twenties to mid twenties, I remember being like, I mean, I just want to help people. I just love that feeling of getting off the phone or talking to someone and being like, hey, you really helped me. And I love that feeling. So we'll fast forward a little bit. And I had got into insurance and it was not the Medicare side, but I had some insurance background. So when, uh, one day, Joe and I were over at his parents' house and we're having dinner and his dad had retired from the federal government. So he was a government employee, uh, retiree. So, and I always refer to his dad as like a 
seminar junkie. I say, quote, seminar junkie, because he loved to go to Anthem and Humana and all these different insurance companies, their local seminars. And he would go in and he'd talk to whatever, whoever was presenting. And he would say, well, I retired from the federal government. Am I doing things right? <laughs> it seemed like he constantly was getting some different answer because I think really he wasn't, people weren't getting the full picture of what his situation was per se. So Joe and I were over at his house for dinner one night and he said to us, Hey, can you take a look at my insurance and just make sure that I have exactly what I'm supposed to have? Because I really don't know. And at the time he was 70 years old. Okay. So he was 70 years old. My mother-in-law was 67. And he said, you know, I retired from the federal government. We're both over 65. We're on Medicare. We just don't know if we have everything we should have. So Joe and I sit down. And of course, this is, this, you know, 15 years ago or so. This is when you had the big CD or DVD CD where you popped it in the CD-ROM. And we started looking at all of his benefits. And the longer we looked at it, we realized he had not signed up for Medicare Part B as a boy when he should have. So when with his particular plan, he went from an active employee to a retiree, which meant he needed part B of Medicare. Now I wasn't there. I wasn't the one that advised him. I don't know if he didn't understand or if he wasn't told, I have no idea. But what I do know is he had been on Medicare for five years because he was 70 years old at the time. And at that point he had not signed up for Medicare Part B, nor had my mother-in-law. So we're sitting there going through all of this and we're like, oh my goodness, you guys didn't sign up for Medicare Part B. Thankfully, we were in an open enrollment period where we were able to help him sign up for Part B. So we helped him and my mother-in-law both sign up for Part B, but they had accrued penalties for that whole time that they did not, had not signed up for part B. They didn't understand that they had been accruing those penalties. So thankfully we were able to get the, the penalties stopped from being accrued, but those penalties are lifelong penalties. So now my father-in-law is 85 years old. My mother-in-law is 80, I think she's right, 80, 83. They, they are to this very day, still paying late enrollment penalties. So this is where my protection comes in because I thought to myself, we started getting involved with looking at their, you know, getting them signed up for the B. They definitely got started paying those penalties. And very shortly after that, I got into Medicare and I thought, I do not want anybody else to have to go through what they went through. So this is why we want to protect them. This is where my this is where our God given mission comes in to help and protect people when life gets complicated. Because really, my mother and father in law they thought they had done everything just right. Because you know they retired, they went on the Medicare Part A. The thing they thought everything was just smooth sailing. Little did they know that there was a mistake. And I thought to myself. He's a smart guy. And if this is happening to him, this is happening to all kinds of people out there. So we got into Medicare. And of course, now, now that's one of my biggest pieces of my, of what I do, we do our, you know, any presentation, we want to talk about the penalties because we want to protect you. Now, I will tell you that once a year, I do a good, I do go over to Washington, D.C., where I do help weigh in on Medicare legislation. Once again, these are ways that we want to help and protect you. So a lot of times when we're doing our consultations with you, we'll say, you know, just so you know that when we go over to, I go over to Washington, DC, sometimes if your stories are very relevant to what we're talking to our um, lawmakers, congressmen, congresswomen, um, our staff, the staffers, we use your stories to let them know, as I say, our boots are on the ground. We're out there seeing what's going on every single day, um, penalties, you know, trying to protect you. Our boots are on the ground and we're there to protect you and help you all the way through every step. That's good, Suzanne. So 
those are those are great stories on where that passion comes from to help and protect. Now, obviously, Suzanne's the co-founder of the company, uh, uh, National United Medicare Advisors. But when we, uh, you know, as we bring people on our team, like we want to make sure that each one of them align with what our mission statement is. So Tisha, our um, other Medicare advisor here on our team, uh, so, uh, do you want to jump in and tell us about, you know, a story that and how that aligns with our mission? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Suzanne and Joe both know that I worked in the medical field for over 20 years before I came to Suzanne. And when I first started my career at about age 19, I was working at a retirement home. And I've always worked with seniors, and that's always been my passion. Um, so anyway, I was assigned to a hall that had um, maybe 10 residents or so on it. And we had a lady down there that was bed bound. She may have weighed 70 pounds, but she, she didn't like to take a bath. She was cold all the time, and she didn't like water getting in her ears. So when I first walked down there, I was able to talk her into getting into the bath. We got in there. I fixed the water for her, made, let her feel of it to make sure it was the right temperature and everything. And we proceeded with the bath. Well, in the middle of the bath, I said, hey, let me wash your hair. It's been a while since it's been washed. Your head will feel so much better. And I'll cover your ears to make sure that we don't get water in your ears. Well, she reluctantly let me do that. And we did it with success. Thank the Lord. After that, she didn't want anybody else to give her a bath because I had built a trust and a rapport with her. She knew that I was going to protect her ears because she didn't like water getting into them. And she knew that she could trust me. So that's how it aligns with NUMA's mission statement for me, because, you know, when it comes to your grandparents and your parents and stuff, you want to protect them and you want to know that whoever they're using for a service for such as Medicare, that they also have that same passion about your parents and your grandparents. And we do here at NEMA. Absolutely. And we think it's so important uh, for everybody on our team to have that same passion to help each help our clients and and that we go through an extensive process when we bring somebody on board to make sure that their values do align with NUMA. And we could probably go on um, for quite a while, you know, telling different stories about how we've helped clients and the joy that it brings us when we actually help our clients. So, um, but I want to wrap it up with a story of my own that kind of goes on the protect side of thing about um, when uh, when I, I I'm the youngest of seven, so I'm the spoiled uh, baby brat of the family. I but anyway, my parents. Uh, they had they adopted uh, an, a, a son right before about five years older than me. So my the rest of my siblings were kind of like older, like um, but the closest one to me was my adopted brother that was about five years older. And he had some mental issues and they my my mom, like I feel like her mission in life is to rescue things, right? Like she recently rescued this stray cat and you know, it's just, it's funny to see that. And I'm like, mom, why didn't you go get like a, a, a you know, a cat from, you know, like, you know, that, that was much cuter. And let's put it that way. But no, she, I feel like she, she has a passion to rescue things. And I feel like she really rescued my, my adopted brother, but he had a lot of mental issues. And it was just really sad as he got older, um, you know, he became very violent. He, he would have violent, he could have violent outbursts, like to the point where my parents had to make sure there were no sharp knives in the drawers at the house and that type of thing. And I, I had a very good childhood, so I'm not childhood. So I'm not trying to say like I had this, you know, I'm, I was a disaster, but, you know, and I, I really appreciate how I was raised, but this was a situation with my brother and and he would have these outbursts. And, you know, I remember like a Christmas morning where, you know, we, it was great. We opened our gifts and, but then he had like this violent outburst where he said he was going to harm himself and that type of thing. And there was this other time that, um, like, like my, my we had this rock, like as a doorstop in our house 
And I vividly remember my brother grabbing that and like holding it up over my mom, like at like saying he was going to kill her. So like, I feel like, like just going through those different incidents, incidences with my mom and her trying to raise my brother, it gave me like this passion to protect her. And even to this day, like she's 83 years old, like I, I have this like passion to make sure that she's protected. And I feel like that that's really where the protect side of our mission statement comes from, because when, like Suzanne said, we went through like this extensive deep into like, hey, what is our mission? And really, it took a large part of last year really digging into this. And it was easy to come up with the help part of it. And I and but I kept thinking like there's there's more to it. And I think that when we finally like, OK, you know, there's more to just helping people because we also need to protect them. And I think that that's kind of where that comes from um, in my history. And I know that Suzanne aligns with that perfectly also with the help and protect people and how she, you know, how it's almost like when we realized what, how my dad had occurred those penalties, it was like, wow, we got to help. We got to protect people from falling into that same thing just because, you know, it's, it's so easy. It's so easy for people to make mistakes when it comes to their Medicare and that type of thing. So I think this was a great first podcast. Uh, I think that that kind of covers how we feel about our mission and our why here at NUMA. Suzanne, do you want to wrap it up? Well, yes, I do want to wrap it up. First of all, I want to thank everybody for joining us and let you letting us use you to do our first podcast because when we, we when Joe said to me, "Hey, let's do a podcast." This was a you know a few months back. I thought I don't know if I could just talk <laughs> without having people to talk to. So I love that. I love seeing all these names here, and I love having you on um, the interest that you have in you know our company. We love to help you. We love to protect you. We're here for you with any anything that you need from us. We want to thank you for taking the time and. Watch your email because you'll get another email the next time we get ready to do a live cast or a podcast. So yes, so we didn't mention this when we started recording the podcast. We are doing this live with our clients on uh, video. So if you're listening to this podcast down the road, reach out to us if you want to uh, jump on these live because we're going to record them live. And we might actually have some interactive podcasts here in the future where we ask questions of our clients that are joining us live and answer them uh, for the podcast. So thanks again for everybody joining us. We really appreciate you. We love serving you. And we're here to help and protect you. Thank you. Thank you.